Drawing all these cherry blossoms is just making me want to go to Japan right now. Hey everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a doodle tutorial for the cherry blossom doodles that you guys saw me do a bunch in my February Plan With Me video. If you haven't watched that bullet journal setup video, I will link it above as well as in the description box below. I really, really love that theme. I had so much fun doodling it and by far one of the most requested things by you guys in the comments was for me to do a separate doodle tutorial on the cherry blossoms. So I thought I would help you out and do a little step by step tutorial for you, especially because these cherry blossom doodles and the whole cherry blossom theme was one of my all time favorites. I had so much fun doodling it, so I'm sure you guys are gonna enjoy it as well. Plus, it's a lot easier than you would expect. So get your pencils and a piece of paper or your notebook. Let's get doodling. As usual, I'm gonna start off by breaking down the basics for you. So for the way that I draw cherry blossoms, there's a couple different basic petal shapes. This first one we're gonna call number one and it's like a straight on angle. There's a little divot at the top. This second one, there's multiple divots at the top and it kind of spreads out a little bit more. And then number three is just a little teardrop shape. Number four is a bit more curved, similar to number two. So when you put it all together and draw the basic standard cherry blossom, in an ideal world there would be five petals, and since I'm drawing it from the straight above standard angle, all of the petals are the number one shape, as you can see. And once you have all of your five petals, you can draw a bunch of lines spreading out from the center of the flower with some dots at the end. This will give it the cherry blossom look and kind of complete everything. And you can also draw a bunch of accent lines just for some details. However, even though this is like the ideal cherry blossom, at least in my style of drawing, I rarely ever actually end up drawing my cherry blossoms like this. This is mostly because it would take way too much time. The clips that you have been seeing and are still seeing are all in real time. I didn't speed it up at all. So as you can see, if I had to do this for every single cherry blossom, it would take forever, especially since typically when you're drawing cherry blossoms, you're gonna be drawing multiple. So it's just not realistic to want to draw every single cherry blossom like this. So what ends up happening is that it looks a little bit more messy there's lines overlapping not every single petal might have exactly two divots and then i just draw a bunch of scribbles in the center as you can see it ends up being a lot faster and even though it's not perfect i find that when you put it all together the imperfections make it look a little bit more realistic and add character to it so next up, we are going to discuss changing the angle of your cherry blossoms this is where the other petal shapes come into play so everything is pretty much the same, you're still going to have five petals for the flower, but what's different is that the side petals as well as the bottom petal are now in the number two and number four style. So they're a bit wider and spread out as you can see, and there's a little bit more imperfections at the tips. And then what really makes it look like it's at an angle is when you add these additional lines on the bottom of the petals. You're going to see me add it right here. These curved lines at the bottom and at the side makes it look like the petals are kind of lifting upwards, as you can see. So this is like a slightly tilted cherry blossom. The next one is a cherry blossom from a complete side angle. So again, we're still using number two and number four petal styles, except they're a little bit more layered and you're only gonna see three or four of the petals. You can add some petals in the back, as you can see I'm adding there as well as well as some detailed lines as usual. And then finally, this is a, a cherry blossom that's not fully bloomed yet, so this is where number three comes into play. It's basically just a teardrop shape and you can add some more details in after. So, I mean, you pretty much have the basics of the cherry blossom flower, but now I'm gonna put it all together and explain how I did my February plan with me cover page, which is with the branches and everything. So I started out by using my pencil to sketch out a rough outline of the tree branches. They're all coming in from the edges of the paper. I don't know how to describe how I'm drawing these tree branches, but they're very similar to drawing veins. Uh, just kind of make sure you have one main branch and then sprout out all of these smaller branches out from there. Then, instead of sketching out with pencil uh, every single cherry blossom flower, I just go in straight with my fine liner. 
and since you have the pencil outline underneath, you kind of know where to place the cherry blossoms. I tend to place them where the main branches are of the tree branches, as well as where the smaller branches intersect with another branch. Hope that makes sense. But as long as you kind of make different clusters and spread them out, you should be fine. I also tend to make the cherry blossoms more saturated and larger at the base of the tree. Um, so the smaller flowers will be towards the tips of the branches and then the larger ones kind of where all of the branches intersect. Uh, don't be afraid to play around with changing the different angles. You can see I'm drawing the ones that are slightly tilted. I'm also drawing some side angle ones and I'm changing up the size as well. It'll just give it some more dimension. When you think you have enough cherry blossoms drawn as the base, again, we can always add in more later, don't worry about that. But now we can start drawing the actual tree branches. So I am using a brush pen. This is the Tombow Fudenosuke Soft Tip Brush Pen. And I'm actually holding my pen in a very weird way. I'm kind of holding it more vertical than I normally would, and I'm holding it very loosely. This way you'll have less control over your pen, which sounds terrifying, but it's actually what we want because when you have less control, as you can see, this is what's giving my tree branches a very natural looking, imperfect, jagged line. And I'm just kind of letting my pen take me wherever it wants to go and not worrying about, you know, guiding it in any way. Uh, I feel like it looks a lot more realistic than if I were to use a pen and mimic drawing all of those jagged lines. So I highly recommend you try it out, you can experiment, but I have found that this is the best way to get your tree branches. And don't forget to flick out at the end so you can get that really pointy tip of the tree branch. So I'm getting all of the base tree branches down and I'm going to go in and thicken them later on actually right about now um, using the same pen and I'm just going over the tree branches and thickening it where all of them meet and kind of rounding out the joining points. Again, this is very hard to describe, but it also might help for you to have a reference picture. I know I had a couple reference pictures of real life cherry blossom trees and a lot of them get thicker towards the base branch and obviously towards the trunk. So I tried to mimic that. Obviously it's not completely realistic, but we're just trying to get the vibe. So um, this is also where you can add some more jagged lines and imperfections to give your tree more character. Now it's time for the fun part, which is the final touches. So in all of the empty spaces, what I like to do and what I did in my February Plan With Me cover is fill it in with a bunch of falling, floating petals. So I did them in a bunch of different sizes and I even added little circles later on to make it look like falling pollen as well. And then on the ends of the tree branches, now that we have the tree branches actually drawn, we can add the closed up cherry blossoms, which was petal style number three, I believe, the teardrop shaped ones. So I added these to the tip of pretty much every single tree branch so it looks like the cherry blossoms are getting ready to blossom and I feel like all of these final touches make the whole thing look very serene and calm and peaceful. So now it's time to color the cherry blossoms in. The whole theme for this video is imperfect because as you can see I'm not even fully coloring in the cherry blossom flowers. I mean obviously you totally can if you want to but if you want to do it quicker all I do is color the center and spread it out a little bit and that gives you the cherry blossom vibe because the flowers typically get darker towards the center anyways. Oh, and I'm using my Crayola Super Tips of course to color that in. It's time for my favorite part of these videos where I showcase different styles to draw them because obviously there's not just one way to draw cherry blossoms. So I started out and went right in with my watercolor because I think cherry blossoms pretty much lend themselves to looking beautiful in watercolor. Just the nature of the free flowing lines of the branches and the calm peacefulness of the flowers, especially the pastel colors. It just looks really beautiful in watercolor. So as you can see, I did a couple different styles here. First one, um, I kind of lumped the petals together. Actually, pretty much all of them. I'm not drawing specific petal shapes. They're either just dots or blobs and, you know, using the watery pink color to give off the petal vibe. And then uh, the other one, the larger one, you can see I made the petals more round and then I just made the center darker and it gives it more of a subtle, minimal negative space feel. 
I don't even know how I'm describing it. You guys can just pretty much see it. For this next one, I'm only using markers and I'm also starting out by drawing the tree branches first. Depending on what you draw first, the tree branches or the flowers, it'll give you a different vibe because it'll determine how many flowers you can include on the branch. So as you can see, I'm using my pink marker to draw the dots and the clumps of petals around the tree branch, which makes it look more bold and graphic. I mean, just the using the markers in general makes things look more bold and graphic, but because the tree branch stands out a lot more, it looks definitely a little bit more funky than the watercolor ones or the doodles that I showed you earlier. Here I'm showing you a more perfect cherry blossom. I even colored in the flower all the way and blended out the darker color from the center using my Tombow dual brush pens, which is something you can play around with. At this point, I don't even know what I was doing. I was just kind of doodling and having fun and seeing where my mind took me. So I don't even know what this next one is. Oh, uh, I decided to do kind of a black and white one and in order to make the branches look more branch-like, I added these little swirly candy cane lines on the branches which added a bit more detail to it. For an abstracted version, I decided to see what it would look like if I drew different color dots and circles around a tree branch and actually really like the way it looks. It looks very quirky and cute, I think, uh, but still gives off the vibe of cherry blossoms. I experimented with using a pink fine liner instead of coloring it in with pink and then I followed the contours of the petals and filled it in with these lines, these repeated lines. I mean, I'm not sure if it looks exactly like cherry blossoms, but I think it's still a cool effect. And then finally, I used a very thick fine liner, made the petals very perfect, and colored it in with one solid color to give it a vector clip art look. All right, everyone, so that was it for my cherry blossom doodle tutorial. I hope it answered some questions and helped you improve your cherry blossom doodling skills. If you recreate these cherry blossom doodles, whether it be in a bullet journal setup or just for fun, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Amanda H. Lee. I love seeing your recreations, so you can go do that. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more from me, you can hit that bell button down below so you never miss a new video. But I think that's pretty much it, so keep doodling and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye everyone.